former Democratic Alliance leader Musi Maimani has taken exception to Tony Leon branding him an experiment gone wrong. The claim was made in Leon's new book titled Future Tense Reflections on My Troubled Land. For more on this, Mr. Leon joins us now uh, via Zoom. Mr. Leon, good, good evening and thank you so much for your time tonight. Yesterday we spoke to the former DA leader, Musi Maimani, who says that, uh, you know, being described as an experiment gone wrong is for him something that is completely de dehumanizing. What do you make of that reaction and what did you mean by those uh, remarks? Well, let's uh, just clarify. First of all, uh, this is fake news. I never said this in my book. It was a line in an interview I did with News24 about my book, Future Tense. So it's not in the book, although the book does deal in a few of its pages with the travails in the DA when Musi was the leader of it. What I said, the actual sentence in the interview, was that Musi was an experiment that went wrong as Musi had never committed to the party's ideals before he joined it. And it was a matter of fact that Musi had never voted for the DA in the two elections he could vote after 1994. He'd vote against the DA or the DP in those elections. And on the day that he arrived in Parliament as a newly sworn-in member, he was immediately appointed leader of the opposition and the parliamentary DA caucus. And this, there have been eight leaders of the parliamentary opposition in South Africa since 1994, of different genders and races. But this was the first time ever that someone was made the leader on the day he arrived in parliament, which was without precedent. And in that extent, it of course was an experiment, something different, something uh, original, which is what the definition according to Collins of an experiment is. So how this becomes dehumanizing, I understand people are angry, they, uh, they're suffering at various levels, is extraordinary. And, you know, with all respect and affection to Musi, he called the current leader, the DA, who's a practicing Christian, a, a Judas. So I think perhaps we should have a sense of perspective when it comes to uh, parliamentary invective. And talking about a sense of perspective, Mr. Leon, I'm sure you can understand that the context at which you use the words an experiment gone wrong, particularly in a South Africa today, like ours. Some have said that these statements to them have invoked the time when Sarah Bartman was used as an experiment, seen as a freak. Others say that that is the kind of emotion that these statements have invoked. So do you understand why there would be outrage? I'm very sorry if people are offended, but frankly, if you just look at that sentence, about someone who'd never commit to the party's ideals before he joined it, and that is an experiment for anyone, uh, I don't see how you can be offended. It's a matter of fact. It's a matter of, uh, of his own acknowledgement that he wasn't a DA supporter before he joined the party. He'd had an opportunity to vote for the party. He'd voted against it in two elections. And, you know, in the same interview, I spoke about uh, Mr. de Klerk, and, uh, who was a former president, after all, and deputy president since democracy, and I said his remarks about crime against humanity or part of not being a crime against humanity were very stupid. Now, you know, you can be offended because who am I to attack a former president of South Africa? But this book, which I was told was the subject of this interview, obviously canvases a wide range of personalities and events. And, uh, you know, Musi was one of the, was the person who called me in, along with some others, to look into the, under the hood of the party that he led after the 2019 election. And... This book reflects on some of those findings. And some of those that, you know, that have spoken on social media, and I'd like to look at this particular tweet by Simon Grinrod, who says that in the 2004 elections, DA leader Tony Leon claimed his party would achieve 20% of the vote, but only got 12%. Nothing happened. Musi got 20.8% in 2019, was investigated by a panel and blamed for a 1% loss. Go figure. Well, Mr. Grindrod is a well-known opponent of the DA and the DP and his, you know, supporter of the IT or whatever Mr. Lil's party is now. So I take what he says with a bucket of salt, not a pinch. But not a lot but of South I Africans are taking it with a bucket of salt. A lot of South Africans well, are looking at this as an even playing field. Sorry, did, did you invite me for an interview about my book, or, which I was told by your producer, or am I here to discuss social media Twitter exchange? Well, the social media Twitter exchange, Mr. Leon, was in fact in response to that particular article in which you took part. And I certainly do hope that you can appreciate that some South Africans would love to get some responses. Madam, there are a lot of things on Twitter, and uh, some of them are 
very vehement. Some of them are completely wrong. Most of them didn't even bother to look at the article, and very few of them, if any, had actually read the book. So, you know, it's a bit like uh, having an argument in, a, in an echo chasm because there's no actual context uh, to it, and there's actually no discussion. It's just, uh, you know, vitriol. So I'm not much interested in that, but uh, what I am interested in is when I was appointed the leader, or elected the DP in 1994, it had 1.7% of the vote by my uh, predecessor. I took over then. The election Mr. Grindrod refers to, it had risen to 12.4. The greatest percentage growth of the Democratic Party or Alliance happened when I was the leader of that party. That's a matter of fact. When you talk about, well, Musi got 20%, he and the party had set the party for electoral aims for the 2019 election, and the party failed in all four of them. And so it wasn't just a percentage issue. And it wasn't me, but it was Musi who asked three people, of whom I was one, to investigate what had gone wrong. And very specifically, he signed the instructions to us to look at the capacity of the leadership for the party. And of course, in this book, and indeed in the interview, I reflect on many positive characteristics of Musi Maimani, who's not a shy person when it comes to dishing out his own form of insult. I seem to recall he called Jacob Zuma a broken man and a criminal, and Jacob Zuma in turn called him a fake. I mean, these did not attract uh, thousands of Twitter outrage. So in that sense, I think this is a very selective reading of anything, but be that as it may, you know, there was an election set back for the... flowing from that election result, and that's what we investigated. Mm. And that investigation or that report, which Musi commissioned and Musi appointed, uh, led to various findings, one of which was that the leader and the chief executive and the CEO should step down. And, and Mr. Leon, if I can ask, do you understand, though, where uh, some of the outrage could be coming from by this particular statement? Well, of course, pe people hurt, people uh, are suffering a lot of pain. Now, then I have enormous empathy with that, but uh, I think before one comments on anything, at least familiarize yourself with the facts, not just, you know, some truncated sentence. I mean, the sentence itself was cut in half for the purpose of the Twitter outrage. But, you know, fine. It's a free country. People are free to comment. And opinions are opinions. Facts are facts. So I'm, you know, fine with that. And what was the full sentence? Musi Maimani was an experiment that went wrong, as Musi had never committed to the party's ideals before he joined it. And he had voted against the party in two previous general elections. So if you make a person who's not in sympathy with the founding ideals of the party, the leader of the party, then you are taking a chance and things can go wrong and things did go wrong on his watch. And did you express this view when he was, uh, you know, made a leader of the party that you do believe that this is an experiment that could bomb in the face of the DA? Well, I, you know, I wasn't involved. I wasn't uh, even a delegate to the conference at which he was elected a leader. I don't believe ex-leaders must go around, you know, ruling from the political grave. That's not my style at all. But so I didn't have a, I didn't have a say in the matter. Huh? But, you do offer, but you do say in the article that you also do offer your opinion when requested. Did you offer it at this time? There were many attractive qualities that Musi had, and I, as you'll see when you read my book, on the few pages that deal with the DA. I mean, there's 16 chapters in this book. I need two deal with the DA, which is perhaps appropriate because the canvas at South Africa today and in the future. And I, I say what those were, but I point out there was a degree of recklessness in choosing a person as leader who didn't actually believe in the party's founding ideals when he'd had a chance to vote for it before he joined the party. That, to me, is a matter of fact. And there were other people. There's a person who stood against him who had a, a record in the party, who'd been in Pond for years, he got 10% of the votes of the party in that Congress. Musi got 90%. So the party made a determination, as it's his good democratic right, and there were consequences. That's all. Mr. Leon, thank you so much for your time tonight. That was former Democratic Alliance leader, Tony Leon.